Hey everyone and welcome back to the Marin Bikes YouTube channel, Duncan Shaw here and on today's video I'm going to run through three different techniques to help get you and your bike up and over obstacles. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I am first and foremost a trials rider so I know a few things about hopping bikes up and over obstacles. We do have my Marin Trials bike, which is brand spanking new. I'm delighted to show this off a little bit, but I've also got my Marin Riftstone Carbon 2 mountain bike, and I've even got the Marin Headlands gravel bike. So I'm gonna run through these three different techniques and show you how they apply to the different bikes. The rock method is basically coming up to the obstacle and lifting up your front wheel, using your body weight, getting your body weight up over the front of the bike, and then unweighting your back wheel, getting your back wheel clear of the obstacle before getting on top of it and riding it. You're gonna roll up at it, preload the bike, and then unweight before riding off. I guess this technique could be broken down into two sections. The first section being the lifting up of your front wheel, and the second part being the lifting up of your back wheel. When you are lifting up your front wheel, it is all about the preload and snap that I've talked about in previous tutorials. When I roll up this obstacle, I am basically pushing down into the ground and then very quickly snapping back up and pulling the wheel up towards me to get it up onto the top of that pallet. Once you feel you're getting more and more comfortable with lifting up your front wheel, you can think a little bit more about timing because timing is so key with this. If you go too late, you'll end up kind of like here and you'll struggle to then have time to lift your back wheel up. Then obviously if you go too soon, your front wheel might be coming down before you do it. So it's all about figuring out where's a good starting point to start the move. And then as you move on to higher and higher obstacles, the window of timing just get a little bit shorter. So that's why it requires just a little bit more practice as well as obviously the extra strength and technique to lift the bike up onto the higher obstacles. So moving on to the second part of the technique, and that's what I call the unweighting technique. And that is essentially lifting up the back wheel using nothing but body weight and grip on the pedals. This is something that people will maybe think you can use your front brake for, which you technically can, but it's not really the right way to do it and it'll kill all your momentum and it'll actually get in the way of you learning the proper technique. The key to this one is really that sort of curl and pressing down and back on your feet. So moving on to the mountain bike, the main differences between this and the gravel bike, the suspension definitely changes things up a little bit, but the actual core elements of the technique are still the same. You're still trying to preload into the ground and pulling up. The immediate thought would potentially be to harden up your forks, but I think the suspension is, seeing as it's there, you may as well try and use it to your advantage. And it's all about really preloading with your forks and almost getting suspension to work with you rather than against you. And if you really compress the forks before you get to obstacle, you'll actually get a little bit of an extra push. So for technique number two, we're going to show you the pedal hop, which is basically a traditional bunny hop, but you're going to use a full rotation of your cranks to help instigate that move. The first part of the move, really similar to the first technique we talked about, it's all about getting that front wheel up in the air, using your pedal strokes, and then as you do it, you lift up your back wheel with a bunny hop technique. If you need to, you put your brake on when you land on the edge of the obstacle. I think it's easier to do this technique in the drop bar position. It's just a little bit nicer to have full control of the brakes. Setup wise, depending on what races you're running, like something in the middle of the range of gears that you have. It's all about just getting a balance between not having something so hard that you can barely turn, but you still want something with a fair bit of resistance, because that's kind of where you get your power from. So when it comes to the pedal hop technique on the mountain bike, again, the core principles of the stunt and technique are all the same. In some ways it's easier than the mountain bike because the geometry is a little bit more conducive to that sort of trick, but the suspension and the weight makes it a little bit more sluggish. You can be a little bit slower with the snaps, I think, on the mountain bike because the suspension gives you a little bit more of leeway, whereas the trials bike and the gravel bike are a little bit more rigid. Just maximum preload on the ground and maximum tuck of your bike into your body to get yourself up and onto those obstacles. So moving on to the pedal hop technique on the trials bike. Don't really need to worry about setup because this thing is pretty much always in hopping mode. The gear is the right gear like we talked about before and the seat is obviously in the right height. I almost feel weird doing a pedal hop technique on the trials bike just because it's so light. A 
last but definitely not least is the traditional American bunny hop. Lifting your front wheel up first before lifting your back wheel up to join it. And that is a super effective and versatile move to not only get you onto obstacles but also to get you straight over stuff. It's basically the first technique that we talked about but rolled all into one. So rather than lifting your front wheel up and then getting your back wheel up, you're actually doing it all at once, which might seem a little bit daunting, but again, with a little bit of practice, you'll be amazed at how quickly you'll pick it up. Time is a massive factor in this, so I found when I was learning how to do this trick, putting out something like a stick on the ground, or even just seeing a line in the ground will help you get your timing. Again, I know I go on about it all the time, but it's all about really muscling, really exaggerating that move, pushing really hard into the ground, snapping really quickly with your arms, tucking the bike up into your body using that unweighting method. When you watch those pros doing it on YouTube, it is super chilled looking, but when you're actually living it and when you're doing it, it's way more involved than it looks. Again, this is definitely a bit more complicated than the techniques we've talked about before, so even more perseverance and patience is required with this one. No matter how tempting it is to give up, you'll be amazed at just trying over and over again. One will just suddenly go, and once you get that first one, you can then just focus on the fun part, which is actually just getting higher and higher. When it comes to the bunny hop on the mountain bike, principles are the same. It's just a little bit more involved, really just exaggerating that move and getting the suspension to work for you. So when it comes to the bunny hop on the trials bike, I thought we'd not mess around. We've doubled the stack, we've gone from a three set to six set, and let's see if we can hop up it. Oh, no bother. Even though it's twice as high, the main principles are the same. Maximum preload, maximum tuck, and because this bike is designed for it, it allows me to maximize both those out. I can really push it into the ground. It's got no suspension to hold me back. It's got loads of clearance. So yeah, makes it absolutely perfect for hopping up high stuff. So there you have it. That was three different techniques to get you and your bike up and over obstacles. If you do have any questions about anything I've talked about in this video, please leave your comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. In the meantime, stay safe and we'll catch you next time.